Alright, just wanted to do a video talking about the scriptural purpose of miracles versus the charismatic counterfeit miracles. And the first thing I need to point out is the fact that the scriptural miracles were not some kind of show that was put on every single week at the church services like the charismatics on TV do and on YouTube and Facebook do. Okay, These signs and wonders were a fulfillment of prophecy. The signs and wonders and the miracles that Jesus Christ did were the fulfillment of prophecy. For example, like in Isaiah chapter 35, verse 5 to 7 talks about the healings and also Isaiah chapter 28 verse 11 to 12 is a prophecy about the speaking in tongues and how it's for the Jews. Basically yeah, so it's, it's confirming, basically confirming the word. And the first point I need to make about these signs and wonders and miracles about the scriptural purpose and how it goes against this charismatic counterfeit is the fact that Christ's miracles were not a pattern for believers to follow throughout the church age but rather were signs of his messiahship and the fact that he's the son of God. Okay Hebrews chapter 2 verses 2 to 4. Scripture on the matter, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 2 to 4. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we how shall we escape if we, if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord, and it was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing the witness with both both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts from the Holy Ghost, according to his own will? Okay, the signs and wonders and gifts from the Holy Ghost that Jesus Christ did and also by the apostles was confirming the word and also confirming the gospel and also Jesus Christ confirming his messiahship and his, and his sonship, basically that fact that he's the son of God. And also we're going to show that the signs are also for the apostles confirming their, their apostleship as well. But we'll get into that later. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 36 to 38. John chapter 10, verse 36 to 38. Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though you, be you believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Okay, these works that Jesus Christ was doing was once again confirming that he is the Son of God and that God the Father is in him. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 22 to 24. Acts chapter 2, verses 22 to 24. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, have ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it, it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Okay. And notice something else out there, else out there as well. Also, we like I said, we see the fact that God is, is approving and busy having Jesus Christ do these signs and wonders and miracles to prove that, yes, he is in fact you know the Son of God and the Messiah. But also, notice there, ye men of Israel. And talks about among you. These miracles were done among you. Why? Because these signs and wonders were for the Jews. Okay, the Jews require a sign. Talks about in First Corinthians chapter one verse twenty-two. John chapter four verse forty-eight talks about you know except you see except you see signs and wonders you will not believe. Uh, in, in context, he's speaking to Jewish people. It's also there is the fact that the nation of Israel was built on signs and wonders. Talks about in Deuteronomy chapter four, verse thirty-four. I mean on and on it goes. I mean there's First Corinthians chapter fourteen verse twenty-two. Which talks about the tongues were a sign, you know, for them that believe not. And in context, he's referring back to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 to 12. There's also Joel chapter 2, verse 28 down to verse 32, which is quoted in Acts chapter 2, I believe it's verse 16 down to verse 21, where again, it's it's a prophecy about dreams and visions regarding it's for the Jews. Okay, the Jews require a sign. Gentile Christians, we have the word of God. They walk by faith, not by sight. But these charismatics, they want to walk by their experiences over the word of God. You see, with these charismatics and Pentecostals, their experiences trump what scripture says. You, I mean, I, I've been going back and forth with these charismatics. I, I'll, I can give them just scripture after scripture after scripture that just proves them wrong. But they always, they always, almost always will they retort with, well, you know, my experiences say this or my experiences show me that the gifts are still here. Basically, it's their experiences trumping the word of God. Because why? Well, the scriptures are not their final standard. Their feelings and experiences are their final standard and their uh, charismatic movement, which is why I say it's a false religion. But anyway, uh, what about the apostles? Well, likewise, the miracles performed by the apostles were signs of their apostleship. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. 
like I said, it wasn't some show that was put on, you know, to get money and get fame like these guys on TV on the internet do. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Okay, and what were the signs of the apostle? Well, we see this, for example, in Acts chapter 2 and verse 43. It talks about, it gives an example of that, Acts chapter 2, verse 43. It says, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. It's the signs of the apostles. And by the way, there are no apostles today. The office of the apostles uh, was with the twelve. There, there are no so these charismatics who claim, oh, I'm an apostle. You know, there, there is, and I'll, I'll be doing. I covered this on my website. The, the attributes and qualifications and and marks of an apostolic, you know, an apostle of Jesus Christ. None of these charismatics meet any of, of the marks of an apostle of Jesus Christ. First of all, an apostle of Jesus Christ physically saw the resurrected Christ, and that can't happen today because the apostle Paul in First Corinthians chapter fifteen verse seven to eight talks about how he was the last one to see. The resurrected Christ, he was born out of the due time. Okay, the apostles, uh, the marks of a biblical apostle are not met by the charismatic, uh, self proclaimed apostles today. And again, I, I covered that on my website, I'll, I'll link it in the description. But the bottom line is, is that these signs and wonders were for the apostles, you know. And I mentioned that earlier because the charismatics will obviously retort and, and claim, well, the apostles are still there, is still the office of an apostle today. No, it's not. There's no scriptural evidence for that because none of these charismatics meet the marks of a biblical apostle. And here's more proof that not every saint could do these gifts. These gifts were for the apostles. Uh, is the fact simply that when Dorcas died in Joppa, the believers there could not raise her from the dead. Okay, They had to call Peter to come and do it for them. Why? Because these miracles were signs of an apostle. They were extraordinary. Okay, you, you can't call them miracles if they were done every single week on services, on, on Sunday services. Then you can't really call them miracles at that point because a miracle makes them out of the ordinary. So when these charismatics do this, they're, they're, they're demonic, uh, you know, their demonic ramblings and their demonic false, false gifts every single week on Sunday, then it basically, just, it basically disqualifies them as miracles because it's not, it's basically ordinary. It's not no longer out of the ordinary. But here's a scripture on that. Acts chapter 9, verse 36 to 41. Acts chapter 9, verse 36 down to verse 41. Uh, now there was there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabithia, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which alms deeds which she did. Uh, and it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, uh, whom they had wet, they had they had washed, they laid upon they laid her in the upper chamber, not good at reading on a computer, in an upper chamber, and for as much as Lada Lydia, I think I say I said, was dying on the Joppa. And the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent, un they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into, into the upper chamber. Uh, and all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the, co the, cost, sorry, the coats and garments which Dorcas made. Uh, which she was when she went while she was with them. Sorry, but, uh, but Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him into the body turning him to the body said Tabitha rise and she opened her eyes and when she saw Peter she sat up and he gave her his hand and lifted her up and when he had called the saints and widows presented her alive okay not good at reading on a computer but we see there that they couldn't do it they had to get Peter to come do it for them why because these were the signs of an apostle these were out of the ordinary it wasn't some show these charismatic like these charismatic put on every single week on tv and on their their internet live streams to get money and get fame and take advantage of people who have actual legit, you know, physical problems and they scam them out of their money and, you know, f pretend to heal them or just do it by the power of devils. Because we do see, for example, in, se in 2 Timothy, sorry, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verse 8 to 10 in comparison with Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 down to verse 15, I believe it is. Uh, we see that Satan can actually mimic and counterfeit these signs that were done by Elijah and that could be done by the apostles, which, you know, for example, calling down fire from heaven. So these charismatics, I do believe in some cases they are doing, you know, spiritual type of stuff, but it's from devils, not from God. And before they accuse me of blaspheming the Holy Spirit, I've done, I did a video on that, how they just totally twist Matthew chapter 12 uh, to work in their favor. And I'll link that in the description as well. So anyway, the bottom line is don't be deceived by this charismatic movement. The miracles they do are nothing like the scriptural purpose of miracles. 
You know, and in First John chapter four verse one to three does tell me to test the spirits and try the spirits. So, and and why, how do we do that by the word of God? So your feelings and experiences don't trump the word of God. You may very well have feelings and experiences, but it doesn't mean it's from the Holy Ghost. They they always say things like, "Well, you got to prove that the gifts have ceased." Well, you got to prove that your gifts are the ones found in the Scripture, because they're not. So anyway, don't be deceived by this charismatic movement. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.